Hello everyone, this is a Notifier NFS640 Fire Alarm Control Panel. These were first introduced in the early 2000s and were designed for small to medium sized facilities. The NFS640 is part of the first generation of Onyx panels alongside the NFS3030. The Onyx series were introduced new components and features, including the flash scan protocol, which was first introduced by the AFC600 in the late 1990s. The NFS640 has one SLC loop for up to 159 detectors and 159 modules. This could be expanded to a second loop for a grand total of 636 devices. The NFS640 will inherit many features from the earlier AFP series panels, including agent release, networking, voice evacuation, and panel circuit modules. The NFS640 will also introduce a newly designed circuit board, built-in strobe synchronization, and interfacing with the NCA network control enunciator. So let's jump right into this. For this demonstration, the NFS640 has been modified with various different enunciators. At the top left is the NCA network control enunciator. The NCA is normally used on network systems to view and control various panels on the network. But for this demonstration, it's being used as the primary display for the NFS640. In the bottom row are some local enunciators for the system. These include the LCD280 LCD enunciator, and the ACM24AT LED enunciator with an expander. Both of these enunciators communicate to the NFS640 over RS485 communications, while the NCA communicates to the NFS640 over the network. On the table are various conventional devices connecting to XP modules inside the cabinet. We have an MB212L pole station, a Chemtronics heat detector, and an Edwards heat detector, and for signals, we have a System Sensor Spectral Classic P1224MC horn strobe, a System Sensor MHW mini horn, and a System Sensor Spectral Classic S1224MC strobe. This NFS640 was programmed for a multi story apartment building where every unit has its own initiating device and signal. And there's also general alarm signals in the hallways. In a high rise hotel or apartment building, it may be impractical to evacuate the entire building over a single alarm. Instead, a local sounder may activate in the room where the alarm occurs, and authorized personnel can go and investigate. On a smaller scale, this could be simplified using selective signaling of horns and strobes. For this demo system, the heat detectors are individual sensors in the apartment units, and the MHW is the apartment unit's local sounder. If either heat detector activates, the mini horn will sound, and the panel will indicate the alarm on the various displays. If a second heat detector activates, or a general alarm signal like this pole station is activated, then the building undergoes a full general evacuation, and the spectral or classic signals will also activate. So let's begin by activating this heat detector, which will activate this mini horn. Sounds from the NCA, and with the larger display, there's a more detailed account of the alarm. Apartment 103 is the precise location on the first floor, the zone number, the device type, it says smoke conventional here, but using heat detectors for this demo, the timestamp when the alarm occurred, and the address. Node 5, that's the NFS640, loop 1, the SLC loop and module three, which is the exact address of that unit. Down here, the LCD280 indicates more concise information with text, and the ACN24 AT provides LD enunciation, indicates that apartment unit 103 is an alarm. Now let's activate the second heat detector, and it'll put the system into full alarm. Sounds again. If we check multiple events, 
is now two alarms on the system. Now apartment unit 104 is indicating an alarm. And also shown here on the LCD 280 and the ACM 24AT with the general alarm. The hallway signals, the Spectral Classics sounded, as well as every sounder and all the apartment units in the building, which signals a general evacuation of the entire complex. So now, let's reset the system. It's very quick. The SLT does take a few seconds to initialize, however. So once that's done, we can activate the system with the pole station. Silence from the LCD-280 this time, and the display shows hallway poles, first floor, also shows on the ACM-24AT, and on the NCA. Now we can reset the system from the LCD-280. Just like that, the system is back to normal. The NFS-640, alongside the other full-size Onyx panels, used the CAP4 series enclosure. These are the same as the CAD 3 series used by the AFP panels, just with a new color scheme and some minor alterations. This is a B-size cabinet. It features two rows plus a bottom row for batteries. As for nomenclature, the back box is the SBBB4, the door is the DRB4, and for dress panels, the DP DISP for the top row, the ADP4 for enunciators in any intermediate row, and the BP4 for the bottom row where the batteries are stored. On the back of the NCA display is a circuit board. It has a security tamper jumper here, a NUP cable connector for connecting to an NCM communications module, some terminal blocks here for RS-232 peripherals, various relays, alarm, trouble, supervisory, and security. The supervisory and security relays can be converted to alarm relays if desired. Terminal block here for ACS enunciators, a larger one for terminal mode enunciators, AKS-1 key switch jumper, piezo, ribbon cable connector here for monitoring a power supply like the MPS-24A, and then 24 volt DC input and output. Inside the back box is the CPU-640, the main board for the entire system, and it's connected to a CHS-M2 chassis. This box right here is the main power supply, and it's integral to the CPU. If it fails, which it can, the entire board will have to be replaced. It's one of the biggest weaknesses of the NFS640, as all other Onyx panels have power supplies that can be taken out and replaced if necessary. There are various terminal blocks on the CPU. All these terminal blocks on the left here are the signal circuits, piezo, circuit breaker, AC input, battery connection. On the top, here is the 24 volt aux power. It is non-resettable and resettable. Alarm, trouble, supervisory, and security relays. Like the NCA, these two relays can be converted to alarm relays if desired. RS-45 for terminal mode enunciators, ACS enunciator bus, RS-232 ports, and here is the built-in SLC loop. On the bottom here, there's various LED indicators. There's also some buttons here, acknowledge silence and reset, which can also be used if there's no display connected to the panel. An optional loop expander module, the lem 20 can be added on the CPU. It sits back there. It can also be mounted on the front here on the CHSM2. The CHSM2 allows for various other components to be installed on it, including those network communications modules sitting in the back there, these panel circuit modules on the front, and other components like the UDACT or TM4 transmitter module. Panel circuit modules connect via ribbon cable to two connectors right here on the bottom of the CPU. There's a longer connector right here for the KDM2 keypad display module. This is the main display for the NFS640. It allows for viewing and controlling the system, as well as programming the system from the front panel. All of the Onyx series panels can operate without any display at all, especially on network systems where they may be controlled by an NCA, like that one, or a network command center somewhere else in the system. In such cases, the only way to program these panels is through the Verifier tool software. The NFS640 supports up to two full rows of panel circuit modules. This panel has two. They're both CRM4RK relay modules, and both of them have the CRE4 expander modules behind them for a total of 16 relays. 
For this system, these are just being used as test switches. So if you press a button, it will activate the desired point. The NFS640 also supports any other output modules, such as the ICM4 signal module, the VCM4 voice telephone module, and the DCM4 dual channel module. Got quite the late show here in the bottom row. These are the XP series modules mounted on a CHS6 chassis. And here is the XP6R relay module. It has six Form C relays on it. Each one has its own address. And behind it is the XP5M monitor module. It has five inputs. And these can be used for any dry contact devices like pole stations, four wire smoke detectors, and mechanical heat detectors. In the middle is the XP6C control module. It has six outputs for signaling. Each signal circuit can have its own power source or they can all be jumpered together like it's done here, using an input source and then jumpers on each of the circuits. Behind it is an XP6MA monitor module. This has six inputs and these are powered, so two wire smoke detectors can be used on this module. Finally, on the right is the XP5C control module. It has five outputs for either signals or relays. They can be toggled with these buttons here. Like the XP6C, if the XP5C has any signals, these have their own power source, which could be wired up here, and then jumper together if desired. In the back is the XP10M monitor module, which has 10 inputs, and like the XP5M, is for dry contact devices like pole stations, four-wire smokes, heats, etc. And that's pretty much it for the XP modules. These can run on clip or flash scan protocol. The only board that's missing here is the XP-ISO, which has six isolator points on it. Here's the back for the ACM 24AT with the expander and the LCD 280 and unseaters. Both of them are powered with 24 volt DC and they communicate through the RS-485 communications port. The LCD 280 is operating in terminal mode but can also operate in ACS mode. And the ACM 24AT is ACS mode only. Both enunciators have rotary dials here to set their address if on ACS mode. On the ACM 24AT, the SIP switches to set various options including the colors for all of the LEDs. Each of these enunciators have their own lamp test. There's the LCD 280s. The piezo was disabled for this demonstration. And the LEDs don't work on this panel, but they do work on ACS mode or terminal mode with the second generation Onyx panels like the NFSC20 and NFS2640. The ACN 24AT also has its own lamp test. Press and hold. You see all the LEDs. As seen in the lamp test, there's some that are configured for yellow enunciation and some for green. And each LED point has its own yellow trouble indicator as well. The NCA has various different buttons and LED indicators to enunciate events on the network. The system indicators are on the left, operator controls on the right, a full keypad like the KDM2, and additional buttons for prompts on the LCD screen. The NCA is serving as a primary display for this system, but it also has its own menu interface. So you have Restatus. This can be used to view any device on the network, like the ones on the NFS640. You have program printer functions, if there's a printer installed. And several different views. The graphics screen, multi-event list, if there's multiple events on the system. Event counts. And then history display to review some history. So let's check the local history. Alarms. So you just have all the alarms from the demonstration. It's the same thing which we were to view from the node itself. And you can pull the same events from the 640's history buffer. So let's check out the program mode. Enter a passcode. defaults can be found in the user manual. So from the top level, you have alter status as well as programming for a node and the NCA. Here's the alter status menu. You can disable and enable points on any node on the network, view detector sensitivity, clear verification counts, clear history, initiate a network walk test, change time and date, and control points on and off. Next is node program. Select the node. Node 5 is the NFS640. There's no full programming here, but there's an option to edit point labels, edit the node label, which is the system normal screen for that panel, and send time sync. And this allows the clock to synchronize with the NCA. 
And lastly, the NCA program menu. There's various options here to program the NCA itself. First is network parameters. You can set the node address, the node label, the network wiring style, the channel thresholds for the network control module, and IP download to accept downloads over the internet. Next is network mapping. This sets which nodes on the network the NCA can monitor. There's only two nodes here. Node 4 is the NCA and node 5 is the NFS 640. But on larger networks, there could be many more nodes here. There's an auto program option here, which automatically maps any online nodes to the system. Next is NCA settings, event ordering, display addresses, default, reminder for a reminder, proprietary and remote, telephone ringing, enunciation, and DCC participation for a display center. Next is NCA timers. This sets auto silence and AC fail delays. Event monitoring sets what events to monitor. You get fire alarm, trouble, supervisory, security, any output activations, pre-alarm, disable points, and any other event. Next is LCD display. You can set the contrast for the display, the language, and the backlight. Next is ACS programming. The NCA can support its own ACS enunciators, especially if it's in a remote cabinet and can be used to indicate various events on the network. So just like on any of the fire alarm panels, you find the address and set to what enunciator type it is. And then you can change the point programming for each enunciator that is installed. Next is supervision. This sets what components the NCA monitors. There's an option for power supply. This may be set to yes if the NCA has its own power supply, but in this case, it's just using the NFS 640's aux power. It's also supervision for printers, CRT terminals, and key switch, some baud rates, and a CRT mode. The last option is password change. It allows changing of the master and user passwords. If the passwords were changed for your particular NCA, a hex code is output if the incorrect passcode is entered in the prompt screen which can be decoded using a software, although this software is only available to notify our technicians. And that's it for the NFS 640 and NCA. These will be discontinued by the late 2000s, being replaced with the NFS 2640 and NCA 2 respectively. Out of all the Onyx series panels, the NFS 640 may rank the lowest, especially due to its unreliable power supply. Nonetheless, it is still a very powerful and flexible final panel, and like the AFP 400, is compact while still providing a variety of high-end features. Nonetheless, if you happen to acquire an NFS 640, while they may rank the lowest in the Onyx series, it is still one of the best panels a hobbyist can get for an adjustable firearm panel. They could be programmed from the front keypad using the KDM2. It still provides a variety of different features, including the flash scan addressable protocol, networking options, and a variety of different peripherals that could be added to the system. As for the NCA, it's a great option for anyone interested in a notifier network system. It supports both Onyx series and AFP series panels, allowing for a great degree of flexibility, and serves as a great head end to a network of panels. In any case, if you have any questions or comments on the NFS 640 or NCA, feel free to post them below. But until next time, have a nice day.